Hi, I'm Marion McPartland. My guest today on Piano Jazz is Joey DeFrancesco. He's a young wizard of the organ, and he's just as magical on piano, too. Joey, you know I'm mad at you already. <laughs> Why is that? Well, because you're so young and you're so terrific, and how did you get so good at such an early age? Well, first of all, thank you for all those wonderful things to say to me. That means a lot. But um, I started playing uh, when I was four. My dad also plays. He played the organ and all the excellent, you know, the real good jazz albums were in the house. And from the time I was a, a young boy, I, you know, baby, I heard all these uh, wonderful recordings of different artists. And also hearing my father play the instrument in the home, I was immediately attracted to the sound and, you know, wanted to play it. Well, did he have have an organ in the house? Yes, he did. And he also um, played in clubs and stuff around the city in Philadelphia. And he would, when I was around six and seven, he started taking me with me. And I, at that time, I was playing the blues. I was sitting in with his group. Oh, my God. <laughs> you mean he'd, he'd take you around, and then he would probably know somebody that was playing mm -hmm. and, and ask them if you could sit in? Mm -hmm. Yes, and when he had, he had a group, too, and I'd sit in with his group all the time. Well, that's terrific. But but now, did he uh, kind of uh, give you lessons or just let you go your own way? He guided me in the right directions. Once he saw that I was very interested in playing music, playing jazz, playing the organ, he never really pushed me before that, but he saw that's what I wanted to do. And basically, he uh, showed me different things about how to do this and different technical things about the instrument. And then uh, when I was 10, he had me go to the Settlement Music School in Philadelphia for... Um, classical training on piano. He thought I should do that for other technical skills. He wanted me to be able to do everything. And um, I went there for five years. <laughs> I was going to say, it worked out that you can do everything. Well, Sounds like it. Well, I'm glad you got a little classical training, too, because that was probably good for fingering and, sure. and a theory and all that kind of stuff. Definitely. Well, do you read as well? Oh, yes. Boy, you're just a monster. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, I'm a very I, big fan of yours, have been for a long time. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, I, I ought to ask you, in fact, I will to uh, ask you to play a solo because I just can't wait to hear you do something. Mm -hmm. How about one of your own tunes? Okay. Um, I'm going to do a tune called Lights, Camera, Action. That's on my, I recorded that on my second album with a big band, but uh, I never played it solo, so this is the first time. <laughs> well, great. It's going to be good. Thank you. 
Boy, that has nice changes. Thank you. Thanks that's a lot. A, that's a good tune. To, that, boy, that's a far cry from a big band arrangement. <laughs> solo piano. Well, how do you like playing solo piano? Do you do that once in a while when you're home? Oh, yeah, I always do. I really like it. It's it's fun to do, and it's can't beat the sound, you know, that, that piano sound, you know. Well, of course, that's what I think, but, uh, but I must say the organ is good, too. Having heard a few fine players in my time, do you, who's, who's your favorite? Um, well, I would say my dad. He's first because he, I learned a lot from him, and he's my favorite. What but, is he, does he play professionally still? No, he's kind of stopped for a while because he was doing everything with me and taking me everywhere, but he's just starting up again. He always did play, but he's starting. he wants to start going out again and playing. What name does he go under the same? John DeFrancesco. John DeFrancesco. Well, next to your dad, who who would be your favorites? Oh, probably Jimmy Smith, uh, Wild Bill Davis, uh, Shirley Scott, Shirley Scott, yeah. Trudy Pitts. Uh, oh, Tr- Trudy Pitts and Mr. C. I yeah. know them. Oh yeah, yeah. I just did um, a workshop yesterday at Temple University in Philadelphia, and um, Mr. C brought the organ down for me. I used Trudy's because you know Trudy plays organ as well. I know she very, plays very well. Oh yes, and. Mm. Um, I like I listen to everybody. It's not just organists. I love everything. It's hard to say who your direct influence is because you learn so many different things from so many people that it's hard to narrow it out to just a few. Oh, of course. Well, I I, I bet you probably listen to a lot of horn players. Oh, definitely. You can tell that by the the things that I play, the lines and things. Well, somebody said that to me years ago that you know p- piano and organ players shouldn't just uh, listen to other. Piano players that listen mm-hmm. to horn players, right? And uh, you know, I guess you get ideas from that. I mean, all you have to do is listen to a few Charlie Parker records. That's right, <laughs> as mm. you probably have done. Oh, I've done all that, and I'm a very big fan of uh, Miles. I played with Miles for too for like six months in 1988, playing different music now, but I still learned a lot because. When he's not on the bandstand, all he ever talks about is what he played, you know, like in the 50s and the 60s. And he showed me a lot of different things with chords and the kind of, you know, because he really knows the piano, too. Now, that's interesting because a couple of years ago, I was in France and Miles did an interview for the paper. And he was kind of, uh, I won't say exactly putting down, but sort of saying, well, I don't play the way I used to play and I'm I'm never going to play that way anymore. And... You know, I think he's crazy because the, those were some of the greatest things he ever did. Not only the greatest things he ever did, some of the greatest things in jazz, you know. Absolutely. Those ballads with the harmony, the trumpet he played. I mean, I don't think there's, there's things that, that, that aren't ever going to be like that. And it's a shame that he doesn't do that stuff. Cause well, he may be forced into it because they're reissuing all his stuff. That's right. And a lot of kids are going to be hearing that for the first time and saying, wow, that's wonderful. Who's that guy? Mm-hmm. You know, and he's going to have to come back and do some of those things. Like, well, that would be great, though. <laughs> wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, I would like that. Well, meanwhile, how about another tune, Joey? Okay. Uh, next tune is a ballad that I wrote. Uh, that's on my latest album. Uh, it's called O-E-I. It's actually a, uh, somebody's last name, which is O-E. And, uh, well, here it is. <laughs> okay.
That's a very beautiful tune. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, when you're going to write something, do you hear it in your head or do you sit down at the piano and say, now I'm going to write something? Or how does it work for you? Well, I wrote that for somebody. Um, like I said, her, her name is Sandra Owe. She's. Um, it sounded like that was written for some young lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, actually, it's written for somebody that uh, works for record company who's helped me out a lot and that's nice she's also a very good friend so that's she, nice i told her i'd write her a song so when you have somebody in mind i have somebody in mind for a song i write a certain way you know it's funny it does work like that doesn't it it really you, does you have a, a picture of the person or, or the mood or the or the way they are or, or the way you feel about them or something like that mm -hmm. exactly that's why that came out so so pretty mm. I was listening to some of those right hand things. You must practice a lot. Oh, definitely. Yes. How, how would you say you practice a few hours every day? Probably four hours a day. Do you really? Yes. And there was a time when I, when I was little, I would practice eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hours. Really? Yeah. It's funny. I used to do do that years ago. I'm, I don't think I had any teenage life. I was always playing uh, Hannon scales and mm -hmm. learning classical pieces, but. It was such fun. It just seemed like nothing else. Right. It, it is fun. I think that's wonderful. You're just so uh, straight ahead with everything. It seems like you knew from the word go that this was something you wanted to do. Yeah. Since the time when I was four when I decided I wanted to play music and the instrument I wanted to play, I've always said this is what I want to do and this is what I want to become, become successful doing this. So I'll be happy, you know. It's funny. I'm picturing you as a little kid trying to trying to reach the foot pedals. <laughs> that must have That's been. exactly, yeah. They just to swing my feet on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't the whole approach and touch and everything is different from the piano, isn't it? Yes, very much. The organ is a lot faster. You know, it doesn't have weighted action like the piano does. And that's why playing the piano, it makes you even faster on the organ, you know. Not that that, you know, it just... But you, it also, you got to be careful that you don't fumble on the keys because they're so fast on the organ than compared to a piano, you know. So I like to practice on a piano as much as I practice on the organ, so I keep my te technique together on both instruments, you know. Oh, that's great. And it's I've been playing trumpet for a year now, too. That's, also, that's terrific. Boy, yeah. it's funny. I, <laughs> I played the organ... I wanted to ask you about that because I remember hearing you, listening to you play, and you're playing a bass line. So well, she she must be able to play the organ too. No, no, not really. What what happened was, this was actually at somebody's. I was asked to play at somebody's funeral, and I only had to play like some slow tune or something like that. So I went to the funeral parlor early in the morning. And nobody was there, and I went in and practiced mm -hmm. on the organ. And the thing that bothers me is the foot pedals. Mm -hmm. So I took my shoes off, and I, I marked, like, C and G and the mm -hmm. basic notes with a lipstick. <laughs> 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 I just had it marked there, so when I came back, you know, I would just be able to go, like... Uh -huh. Okay. Or whatever. 
but that's about all I ever did. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as chops, no, I couldn't. I couldn't do that. Well, what do you say we try, try and do something together? That would be great. Something for like one of the tunes off your, off your Columbia, one of your Columbia albums. Okay. Teach me tonight. That'd be great. All right, that's a good tune. Okay. Let's see. All right, kick off the tempo and we'll start right on it. Okay. Mm
that? Just the way we rehearsed. Every note. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That sure that's is. That's a little, um, a little touch of Earl Garner in there too, isn't oh, it? Oh, I love Earl Garner. Big influence. Oh God, that guy. He was he was too much, mm. and he used to. I used to love to 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 watch him because he would do these introductions. Um, it was so long and the, that the side men never knew what the tune was going to be mm-hmm. or the key or anything else. And he just kept everybody in the dark till he would start the tune. Exactly. It was, ama- it was amazing. Oh, I know. But they were, they were good because they, they could always pick up on. But everything he played was so modern, you know. It wasn't it. Oh, and so hard beautiful. swinging. Mm-hmm. Amazing guy. Well, he did a lot. For the music. Definitely. Certainly did. Well, this show is fun playing with such a swinging pianist. My guest is Joey DeFrancesco. I'm Marion McPartland, and this is Piano Jazz. Listen to me play. How about if I hear you play something? I don't mind a bit. You sort of inspiring me. I hope I can come up with something nice. As a matter of fact, I think I'll do one of my own tunes. Oh, wonderful. And this one's called Willow Creek.
Gorgeous. Talk about pretty chords. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I'd like to know, Joey? How do you learn tunes that you want? Do you just learn them, hearing them on the record? Or Most of the time, yeah. If I hear something in songs, um, I've never learned. Um, not too many standards I've learned by the music. It's all by ear or you know, by listening to the records. And I think that's really the best way of doing it. It is, actually. Do you ever, ever hear maybe a singer will do something and it'll be, um, um, you'll like the arrangement and you'll decide to do that exactly. particular yeah. tune. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I do that a lot. I hear sometimes, it's, it's funny, there's one tune that I think you had on your album, If, if I Were a Bell. Yes. And I, I don't know why I never have played that tune, but but I really liked the way you did that. It oh, just, thank you. That's based on the way Miles did it, basically, without him. You know. It's funny. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Um, I guess Miles probably uh, influenced you a lot, didn't he? Quite or, a bit. Or you said he he showed you some things on piano. Mm -hmm. In fact, he even um, encouraged me. He heard me play trumpet and. Um, I basically try to play it in that style because that's my favorite uh, for certain things. You can't beat it. He gave me one of his mouthpieces for his horn. and uh, I've been playing for a year. In fact, I played on the album, my latest one, on a couple of the ballads on the muted trumpet. That's me playing on there. That's terrific. What are you going to, you're going to continue with that, do, do more of that? Yeah, sure. I love it. I, I have fun with it, you know. Has Miles heard you play? Yeah, he, he, he said I sound just like him. <laughs> That's what he said. Goodness, you couldn't have a better compliment. No, than that. I couldn't. Well, you should have brought it with you today. We should have had it had it today. You know, I thought of that after I I, I already yeah. left that we could have played something. Well, next time. Okay. Next time we'll do it. Um, how about trying another duet? What do you say? Oh, great. What do you want to play? Funny Valentine. Oh, that'd be great. All right. Incidentally, Joey De Francesco is at the piano on the right, and I'm. At the piano on the left. Okay, here we go with Funny Valentine. Okay.
that was nice. Mm, that was really nice. Lovely. Well, I'm just thinking about a good tune for you to play as a solo. We'd be nice to hear you do another solo. Okay. What can we do? Uh, how about Green Dolphin Street? Okay, you got it. By the old right hand. <laughs> <laughs> you really got a lot of things going. Thanks. thanks. Now, who's who's in your band? Who, who are the guys in your band? I have a uh, quintet right now, and um, tenor saxophone. His his name is uh, Tony Malaby, and I have a trumpet player who plays trumpet and flugelhorn. Uh, his name is Jim Henry. My drummer is uh, Byron Landham, he, and um, my guitar player's name is Paul Bonnebeck. And, of course, I play the organ. <laughs> Well, do you have any? I was wondering if you had anybody in, in the group that can s switch off so you can get up and play trumpet. I actually play bass with my foot, chords with my left hand, and the trumpet sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to see you in person one of these days. <laughs> I so actually do to, that. <laughs> next time you're in New York, I've got to catch the act at the Blue okay. Note or some, someplace. That would be great. Yeah. Well, we're swinging and carrying on in here. My guest is Joey DeFrancesco. I'm Marion McPartland, and this is Piano Jazz. Well, 
Well, come on, let's do another duet. It felt so good before. There is no greater love. Fabulous. All right.
God, it's sure it's such a good feeling. You know, I could really be a be greedy and take more courses because comping is so good. You know, you really Thanks. comp. It's grooving. It's like groove <laughs> swinging. <laughs> it was. I could just sit here and laugh for five minutes. You know. Well, it's great that you got started so so young, but it's wonderful. I mean, I love to see young musicians coming up. You know, to like keep on the tradition of jazz. Yes. And I'm just wondering what you would say, like to maybe somebody in your your age who doesn't have the support of the their parents like you've had, how would you tell them to keep, get going? That's very hard because if the music's not in your home, they're not, you know, they're not familiar with it. But I would think that if they listen to it and really listen to the real good stuff that there is in jazz, that they'd have to like it, you know. It's really hard. And the way it makes you feel, it's emotional. That There's so many things that are happening. And when people see it live, it's a really inspiring, you know. I think a lot of kids are being shortchanged without knowing it because they I missed really out so. on some of the great artists in, in jazz. And as, as you describe it, the emotion, the feeling that yeah, you get from it. That's very true. I mean, just us playing here together today, or just really, there's a feeling you can't describe. Sure. It feels great. You and the, feel, the, you're in a good mood when you play something that you know you, you know it felt good. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to put it into words, but it's, boy, it's... It's like yeah. there's nothing else like it. Well, this hour goes by so fast, it's like nothing. Yeah, it really does. And now, I'm, now I'm really ready to play. <laughs> 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 and we we have to stop. And we we were talking before about doing Cherokee. You, you want to have a go at that, Joey? Sure. But before we go into it, I'd just like to tell you what a kick it is getting to play with you. And I, I really think you have a great career ahead of you and I... Wish you all the luck in the world. Well, thank you, but it's an even bigger kick for me to be playing here. So. Well, we've got to do it again or get a two-piano gig or something. Okay. Or you'll have to teach me to play the organ without oh, putting God. lipstick on the pedals. <laughs> 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 all right, let's have a go at Cherokee. Okay. Thank you. 
<laughs> You've just heard Piano Jazz with Marianne McPartland and her guest from 1991, Joy DeFrancesco. Piano Jazz is a production of South Carolina Public Radio. The producer is Sherry Hutchinson. Recording engineer, Andrew Milano. Mastering engineer, Bill Sexton. Executive producer, William D. Hay. I'm David Mitchell. We love to hear from you. Our email address is pj at sctv.org. Our postal address is 1041 George Rogers Boulevard, Columbia, South Carolina, 29201. Support for Piano Jazz comes from the Friends of Piano Jazz, NPR member stations, and NPR. Support for this episode's original production was provided by the National Endowment for the Arts and Exxon Corporation. Support for digital archiving was provided by Save America's Treasures, through a partnership between the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Park Service Department of the Interior. Support for NPR comes from NPR contributors, which include the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, working with others to build a culture of health for all, on the web at rwjf.org. And the Walton Family Foundation, working to prepare all students for a lifetime of opportunity by ensuring access to high-quality K-12 choices. More information is available at waltonk12.org. This is NPR.